This is the Weekly Set, an official podcast of thetotalscreen.com. I wish I was the monster you think I am. You have come here to beseech me. Madness can be a medicine for the modern world. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Weekly Set, the official podcast of the Total Screen. I'm your host, my name is Tyson, and joining me today, as always, is my partner in crime here at the Total Screen, William Rowett. Hello. Today, we are doing episode 292 of the podcast, where we will be discussing WandaVision, episode 7, Breaking the Fourth Wall. It's just kind of ironic, because all the fourth wall-breaking stuff, kind of like actual character fourth wall-breaking stuff. Happened that's in the, last that's the show, right? That's the <laughs> show is breaking the fourth wall but yes like the characters talking to the camera kind of stuff though um in a breaking the fourth wall way was kind of like last week like it is this oh, week yeah, too yeah. but it's confessionals which is just part of the episode structure of like shows since like the office you know right um right. that's not really breaking the fourth wall like it, it is a little bit i guess but not even as much as like Malcolm in the middle style was but we should talk about what this episode was, what it represented. So first off, the whole episode was structured very specifically like Modern Family. Yeah. Uh, which itself was kind of like based on the office style of, of thing, but, but they added their own specifics to it. Like they kind of took away the idea that there's a documentary crew and they just, they left confessionals in, but like they never explained them. It was just kind of like something that happened to give the audience insight. Right. And, and also not only did they, use that modern family framework but like um the title at the end of the opening credits with the red and the white was like the modern family logo and wanda herself in this episode was like clearly filling in for claire dunphy one of the characters in modern family like she, it was like that that frazzled like mom you know with the messy hair and stuff like that that was like yeah. that's totally that character from modern family but they also referenced two other shows obviously we already talked about we already mentioned the office because that kind of created that, yeah, that that style uh, that Modern Family was based on. Yeah, that started the style of having the characters do confessionals. But in addition to know. just being the origin of that style, it also that opening theme in this episode was clearly a take on The Office. And that's what I thought too. Although I didn't know, I haven't seen Modern Family, so I didn't know if the opening credits to that show were similar in any way. No, no, it was a song that was similar to The Office. The actual opening credits yeah. were closer to Happy Ending. Okay. Which did like I, the I, just I constant shots of the different of the name, like how it just yeah, Wanda. Wanda in different fonts. Yeah. That's a, that's happy endings. The TV show that did that for its own. Oh, okay. And I like how it's like created by Wanda Maximoff. <laughs> yeah. 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 It does that on Modern Family. Like when when Modern Family it says like created by and it's two people that created it. Like it's so yeah. Like, well, most shows like uh name the creators and the opening credits now. No, but I mean like so directly crazy. under the top title like that way that that was very modern family like the way it, it, it's exactly like that the one thing they did take musically from modern family was modern family like the office doesn't really have music in the show like wandavision left that in which that was like what made it feel a little different than that but you know like the, like shows like the office or modern family they don't have music unless it's playing in the scene so unless a character has is in their car and they're listening to their stereo there isn't music that just plays in the background you know so that's also the case with Modern Family. Wasn't the case with WandaVision, but the opening theme to Modern Family has this kind of like, like Latin kind of beat thing to it. And you could hear that throughout the music in the background in this episode. So like when a character would be doing something, you'd hear this like, tick -tick 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 -tick, like kind of like Latin kind of beat thing going on. And that's, that's from the Modern Family theme. Oh, okay. And the other, one other show, I even, I didn't even put this in my show notes, but it's just occurring to me now that you could see that might have had some influence on the style as well as Arrested Development. Um, kind of did some similar things with like the cutaways and stuff. Right. Um, where kind of like Arrested Development kind of did a lot of that kind of stuff, but Modern Family did it too. So I don't know how much is the basis there. But anyways, we always break down that kind of stuff. Like what were the influences this week? And the big one, the overwhelmingly big one for this one was modern family 
So yeah, that's that's kind of what was going on for the structure of this episode. You haven't seen any Modern Family, right? No, I haven't watched that show at all. Yeah, if you if you ever just like happen to catch an episode, you're gonna be like, oh, this is like WandaVision. <laughs> that one episode of WandaVision. <laughs> so, yeah, like exactly what I got immediately. It's like yeah, they the look is like exact. It's like I think it's even they did a better job replicating Modern Family than they did replicating Malcolm in the Middle. So it's like it's that prevalent. You know, like that style. But yeah, let's talk about the episode itself. Did you enjoy that that game controller scene? Oh yeah, GameCube controllers, holla! <laughs> well, it's funny because it started with Wii remotes because that's yeah. kind of like the era of the sitcom, you know? Right? Yeah, that's kind of like the era they're working with those Wii remotes. I was like, okay, yeah, so we're not completely in modern times because like nobody because they didn't start out with like freaking uh, PS4 controllers. So yeah, definitely they started out with Wii remotes. Yeah, they so. mostly were Nintendo because it went Wii remote, GameCube, as it went back, Atari. Yeah, and. And then Uno. <laughs> yeah, then Uno. That was kind of like the funniest one. It's like, these are controllers? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it went back before video games existed. So, <laughs> Uno. Yeah, because, uh, because, because, uh, the, the big thing is like, uh, is, is kind of like the reality or like, not, it's not, it's not reality, but the, the whole thing's like kind of breaking down. Mm-hmm. And so, and so everything's kind of like morphing or transforming into like versions of it, versions of itself, like through the different like time periods. We talked about seen. this last week. We, we predicted this. Yeah. We predicted this was going to happen. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen in this episode. I thought I, it was yeah. going to happen in the penultimate, you know, or yeah, like the, the penultimate in the, in the finale, I thought, you know. Yeah. But we're already starting to see it break down like that yeah i liked the way they were doing that like the, the furniture and, and the game controllers and how wanda just was kind of checked out this episode she just wanted to like sleep in she just you know didn't want to do anything didn't want to bother with her kids nothing you know and it just kind of it shows the exhaustion i actually saw like a video where somebody pointed out that all of the like previously on scenes like you know like at the very beginning of the episode when they say previously on wandavision or whatever yeah she gets and, more tired that's... yeah she gets more tired with each one and i never noticed that and i'm like oh wow that's like a really cool little touch that is a really cool little touch yeah so and here she's just completely broken down she's like i'm just i'm kind of through with this i don't want to do anything and uh, uh that played into even the commercial this week so every every episode's had like a, a fake commercial in it and the, this one it was like it for an antidepressant and the cool thing for like marvel fans nexus is, yeah nexus yeah it was named nexus which means like uh, two different things kind of in the marvel cinematic universe uh, i, I not feel marvel bad. universe I, 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 I feel bad because i don't think we talked about the commercial from last week yeah that was in the podcast start and we still didn't we didn't talk about it and it was uh, probably the most interesting of the commercials too. it was probably the most interesting cool so i wanted to that was dark yeah yeah that, that was the darkest of the commercials that was dark they had like a kid starved to death in like a marvel tv show on disney plus i like how direct it was too because it's like the shark says i used to be hungry until i had yo magic like literally meaning your magic you know oh yeah yeah your magic yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like how it was like so direct with that too it was like really kind of cool yeah, it's, I, I still don't know 100% what's going on with the commercials. There's like a lot of like kind of vague ideas floating in my head about what they mean. Yeah, there's a lot of vague ideas. Concrete. Yeah, not, yeah, nothing concrete because I'm thinking back to different commercials and there's like all these references and hints, but they don't seem to gel. The, taking them together as a whole, they don't seem to gel into anything cohesive. Yeah, but once you start starting. to think that you have a solid idea, then the next commercial comes and it kind of completely breaks that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, so it's hard to say. Say they're anything other than maybe just like Easter eggs. I think they're they're about her traumas. Oh, that could be, yeah. But I but before it was like to me it was like oh it's about her past traumas. And then like last week's episode was like no this seems more like what's actually going on. Like the yeah. yo magic one seemed like oh this is like trying to say this is what's happening. Like somebody's like Wanda's draining herself or something. It's and something some nefarious force is like feeding off of her doing that. You know. And like that's kind of how I interpret 
last week's commercial. And then this one seemed almost more than anything, like it was to the theme, the antidepressant thing. Yeah, it was the the, theme that's the, the theme of the episode where Wanda spends the episode in a funk, right? Yeah. The but commercial. then in addition to that, it was like, it was also like a big Easter egg to like the Nexus, which is a big part of the Marvel yeah. comics, you know? Yeah. But because like, Wanda's uh, a Nexus character. You but know? the previous, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. But again, that's, that's a Marvel reference, but previous commercials in the show have had Marvel references. There have been references to Hydra. Stark, like, yeah. Yeah, to Stark, um, you know. What's the, what's the one guy? Strucker. Uh, yeah, Baron Von Strucker. Yeah. And then they've, uh, this one again, cause the last commercial, it was, it was like a claymation thing, but this commercial again had the same two actors in it again. Yeah. So yeah, we see these same two previous... actors have been in all of the commercials. Again, I think th- this is Wanda's parents, not meaning Magneto, who, who like, you know, was her car- parent in the Oh, film. it's definitely but the Magneto. people who, but the people who raised her, I mean, you know? Yeah. Yeah, the people who raised her and died in, in Sokovia, you know, that's, that's yeah. who I'm imagining is the, uh, are these characters. Yeah. Yeah. And you could be right. You could totally be right about that. There were theories going around that each of the commercials represents one of the infinity stones. Um, maybe. I don't I kinda, know. I don't think the infinity stones outside of just the mind stone really are playing much of a part in this series. No, I don't think so. It's I don't... just the mind stone because that's the creation of, of Wanda's ability and vision, you know? Right, exactly. That's the only one that's really relevant to the story. Like, the Infinity Saga is kind of over, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The Infinity Saga is over. We're not going to be revisiting that. Yeah. No, but like, so we should start, we should uh, talk to uh, Darcy and Vision. So Darcy is inside the Hex, right? That's a fun dynamic. That's a fun dynamic, yeah. Darcy's inside the Hex. Darcy is has been reprogrammed by the Hex to play, like, her role it's as, like... an like, escape artist in the circus. Escape artist in the circus or something. Vision, Vision having noticed Darcy uh, outside the Hex, you know, knows that, that she is somebody that he needs to, uh, to get her help, you know, from. I like how they turn that into, like, sitcom awkwardness, though, because he's they like... Do, yeah. Yeah. It's like our eyes met, met each other, and there was an uh, unspoken connection. Yeah, there was. And a she's nice... like, "Sure, buddy." Yeah, sure, buddy. <laughs> she she like calls him a creeper. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, "No, it's not like that." You know, he actually has to like zap her out of her role to get her back to being Darcy again. Yeah. And then she kind of explains everything that's going on to him, kind of everything that's gone on, the, how he died twice in front of uh, Wanda, once at her hands and once um, at the hands of Thanos. And but that, you know, Wanda had to watch that again and why Wanda would be damaged. And all this explanation is going on as they keep getting held up, like something in the creation of the Hex, whether it's Wanda or somebody else who we find out later in the episode, uh, is keeping them away from from getting closer to Wanda to continue front to confronting her you know and it's happening in the way of like you know a, a light that's a traffic light that's not working and then the repair of that light and then it's like a school vacation for an elementary school or something it's like all these like occurrences that are happening and i really dug how they played with the whole the confessional structure that like the office and modern family have in it where they'd cut to like vision and he'd be like sitting in a chair outside of the truck yes. talking or something and then he was like why am i doing this yeah, <laughs> like, why am i doing this <laughs> realize so that the, the, there is something inherently wrong with the structure. They did another play with that structure thing that's actually kind of more meaningful to the plot, which was where Wanda did it, where Wanda was like in a confessional and suddenly yeah. you hear a voice from off screen say like, uh, do you think maybe you deserve it? Yeah, you think maybe you should deserve it? And she's, she's like, what? Do you think maybe you deserve it? And she's like, you're not supposed to be talking. Yeah, because that's yeah. the thing like in, I think, I, I'm not sure because I haven't watched all of The Office, but in the office they acknowledge that there's an actual documentary crew yeah in the office they they very explicitly say it's a documentary and that there are documentarians you know filming them at all times do they ever do they ever talk to them they uh sometimes in the office sometimes they do in modern family it's it's not at all it's it's very it's not very common in the office 
but but I believe it's happened on a couple occasions. In Modern Family, the confessionals are are, are a construct. They're like a narrative construct, and they're yeah. so there so there is no there is no crew. There is nobody filming them. You know, it's, right, it's, right. It's just a narrative construct. So nobody ever talks to them. Like and the since this them. is structured on Modern Family and not The Office, yeah, the sitcom's supposed to be Modern Family, so there's not supposed to be anybody talking back to Wanda, and that's why she says that. You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but did you know? Did you know? Like this was pointed out. Some people actually like pitch shifted the audio and stuff and figured it out. But that the the voice saying, um, "Are you sure you don't deserve this or whatever?" That was. Uh, Agnes. Oh, really? Yeah. It sounds like a male voice when you hear it. Yeah, because it was pitch shifted. Oh, okay. But people like pitch shifted it down, and it's actually uh, Agnes. Well, well, we know, we know that's that's getting ahead of ourselves, though. Well, I just thought that was an interesting touch because it, it just makes yeah. it like a direct thing. They could have easily just used anybody's voice and just said it doesn't matter, you know? That's but true. They actually yeah. did that, and I thought that was kind of interesting. They actually did use the actress's voice for that. Then, yeah, that, that actually surprises me. I would not have guessed that yeah and that's just kind of a cool touch again you know yeah this show has a lot of little cool touches like that like there's a song that plays at the end of the episode that also like the female vocals on it was was her too yep that that's the song uh they they ripped off ashley's song from uh why you aware i was gonna say that because because the thing is like there's parts of that song like it's clearly imitating um the monsters Monsters. theme yeah and there's there's parts between the sung parts in that song that are straight up sound like the exact same like chord progression and parts from the monster song but the other song that was coming to my mind that i didn't see anybody mention because it's not a tv related thing is what you just said which is the ashley song from warrior Way. yeah exactly ashley yeah it's ashley uh, <laughs> you have to be like a super nintendo nerd to, to make that connection so that's probably why you don't see uh you know the normies talk about it <laughs> <laughs> i bet you people like a bunch of the creatives involved in that show probably have no idea what that is either yeah probably Probably not. Yeah, exactly. It's probably like maybe the guy <laughs> doing the theme songs heard it or something, and that's probably it. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but but it's really catchy. It's 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 near worm. Yeah. It gets in there. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, we we'll, should talk. We'll get about, to that later. We'll though. get that's, to that. Yeah, we should talk about Monica. Uh, so so Monica is actually trying to get back into the hex to try and save Wanda. And we remember Monica said she knew somebody a couple episodes ago. Well, she goes to meet somebody in this episode, and it's a rando. Sorry, it's not anybody. Well, we uh, don't know if there's somebody else that just wasn't on scene. Because the person that she's talking to is somebody named Major Goodner, who's just kind yeah. of like an officer in the in, in story. Right. But she said specifically that she knew like an astrophysicist. That's true. And, and they never implied that this major is an astrophysicist you know that's that's true but this is the person she meets so i'm not yes uh, sure yes the person she actually meets is this major goodner there is the possibility that this is a character that we've met before though and that's that it could be there's a lot of speculation that it could be the scroll kid from captain marvel that monica was playing with that'd be kind of random and also not like a very satisfying payoff to anything i i think Um, it makes a lot of sense because it, it plays into the idea that sword is heavily has a uh, scrolls in sword because we had the scene in spider-man far from home where the scrolls were imitating nick fury working for nick fury well and then you see nick fury in a sword thing. station and it's filled with scrolls here's the thing i'm sure scrolls have infiltrated everything i mean we're getting literally getting secret invasion as a marvel tv series on disney plus yeah but so i'm not, I'm I'm not even sure. talking about the evil scrolls i'm talking about the good scrolls yeah because because we that, saw that they were working with or uh, or, Fury. or the neutral scrolls. Yeah. Well, yeah. But we saw that we saw that they okay. were working with McFury right. and Spider Man, you know? Alright, well well it's a possibility, that's for sure. I mean that would make a lot of sense. It's like this this friend that's loyal to Monica, that, that isn't loyal loyal to the organization itself. Like that's kind of what plays into it to me, you know, that like that would be like a really cool reveal. Not that it's like a scroll invasion, but that it's a scroll character that we already know, you know? Right, right. But yeah, so that's that's the one kind of possibility I think that makes it more interesting than just a rando. Um, but it could just be a rando. As you said, they, they meet up with this person. They gave him a, a, a Mars rover like vehicle or whatever to, 
to to use to break into the barrier. That doesn't really work. No. <laughs> and so I said, Monica forces it's cool herself it, through the barrier. But before she does that, it's kind of cool because it spits out the rover, and half of it's like a minivan from like the. Oh yeah, yeah. Which like my parents had that minivan, that like oh, really? gold minivan with the wood paneling or whatever on the side. Like <laughs> that was one of the cars that I grew up with. You know, <laughs> so I distinctly remember that. You know, I thought that was funny. But yeah, like the the car gets rejected, flopped back out. Monica heads back into the barrier herself, and they play like the VO from like Captain Mar. They play a few from a few different scenes from in this episode, but also or in this show, but also from older Marvel stuff like Captain America, where the, the scene where um, Nick Fury says that you know she can't go up into space unless she starts glowing like her her aunt, meaning Carol Danvers. There's also some audio re- reminding us that there was the whole scene earlier in this, uh, and in, in this show in which they said that Monica's like, uh, DNA was like mutating from her time. Yeah. Darcy, uh, Darcy, uh, told her that. Like, yeah. Uh, they played it again. Like they, so they played that audio again. Like what, when she was going through the barrier. Yeah. Darcy saying oh, yeah. that. And, and they ended it. I think the last thing they said, like the last audio they had going through the barrier was that the part of uh, Nick Fury saying, unless you glow like your aunt, you know? Right, right. Um, I thought that was really cool. It's actually our podcast start for this week is the scene where she's going through the barrier and it shows her split into like four different people. Like, yeah. Oh, the yeah. The different incarnations of herself, like in this show. And then she kind of like merges them together and her eyes change color and she gets Wanda vision. She gets Wanda vision. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause she can like, now she can see the energy that's, that's being used in the town. Like she can see like the, the actual reality of the energy. Yeah. Instead of just uh, the way things look to people, you know? Right. Exactly. She can see, uh, I guess like the magic. So this is a good time. You're more familiar with the comics. You're, you're familiar with her character, right? In the comics. Not really. But... It's Spectrum, I believe is the character's name. I've, I've read up just cause I've read things to, you know, to take notes for show notes and stuff. But apparently her abilities are that she, she can in the comics and they could, they could change it for the MCU. They've, they've done that kind of stuff already, you know, where they've changed things like Peter Quill's dad, for example, is different in the comics. But in the comics, that character, Monica Rambeau, her abilities, she, she goes by the name of, uh, at one point it's Spectrum, another time it's Photon, which was like her mother's call name in the MCU. She can like transform herself into different types of energy, like gamma radiation or like, you know, uh, these other kind of like radiations and energies that exist in the Marvel universe, you know? Right. And in addition to that, she can see and replicate energies and stuff. So that's kind of like her eyesight thing is a reference to that of her seeing energies, you know? Right. We haven't seen her like transform into different types of energy, at least yet, you know? But that's kind of what the thing is. So the implication here is that it's not just some temporary thing that like going through this barrier has permanently changed her and, and kind of yeah. like mutated her. Yeah. Going through this barrier. Uh, so, so this is her origin in the MCU is like this barrier because in Marvel, uh, it says she gets her powers due to bombardment by extra dimensional energies. Mm-hmm. Well, what is, uh, you know, the hex if nothing except extra dimensional energies, right? Yep. Yeah. So there you go. Wanda is a Nexus character and that means she stands at the nexus of all the different dimensions or realities. So yeah. she exists in some way in all of them. And that's what like a nexus character is. That's what the reference in the commercial is to. And yeah, so I mean, that's extra dimension. That is the definition of extra dimensional energies, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so Monica is transformed now. Now she's a super, which means she's already going to be on a uh, director Hayward shit list because he just, she, hates, uh, he hates she, all she, supers. She, she, she does like a superhero landing. Yeah. Like she does it like twice. I think they're like, yeah, she does it when she comes out of the barrier and she does it another time when like Wanda like throws her back or something. Yeah. Yeah. So they really, they really, uh, decide to do superhero landings in this episode. <laughs> so yeah, she's, she's trying to convince Wanda to, you know, to come back to reality and to like, to, to end what is going on, you know, and she's trying to convince Wanda that she's not there as an antagonist. So she's there to help Wanda. Wanda sees her as an antagonist and that's, and the effort's not helped when Agnes 
rushes to Wanda's side and kind of uh, scolds Monica and like uh, and just just runs off with uh, Wanda. It actually seems kind of like like Monica was kind of getting through to Wanda, and yeah. then Agnes arrived and just threw that all away. Right, like, all, all of her efforts were pretty much destroyed. I don't know point. if it was timed like that, but because uh, it's just like Agnes like looks out the window and she sees Monica's talking to Wanda, and she like says, you know, like oh no or something, and she rushes out there to uh, to get Wanda away from her. She disrupts it though. Whatever Wanda was being, whatever sense Wanda was kind of like loosely latching onto was like knocked away from her. Yeah, in that moment, you know, and she just kind of became irate again at Tor. Towards Monica and basically said, you know, get out of here. Don't make me hurt you or something. And as she like left. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I mean, I guess this kind of takes us into the the end game of this episode, right? Yeah, the end game. The big reveals. So I was just going to bring up the, the clues, specifically the clues that were inside this episode. So we know three episodes that Wanda was feeling blah and feeling down. Well, Agnes, as always, conveniently, right? As always, she's there to help Wanda out. Uh, she's here. She's there to uh, babysit the twins, you know, while Wanda, like, works out her issues. You know, mm-hmm. and and there's a thing you know where Wanda lets her take the twins, and she she says, "Oh, I won't bite." And it cuts to Agnes in a confessional, and she says, "I didn't bite a kid once." That in itself is is not a clue. The big clue in the episode is when she has the twins over at her house, and oh God, I'm going to get this kid's name messed up. Billy. Billy's the one with Wanda's like power. Yeah, Billy. Uh, yeah. So so Billy, like, he's petting the rabbit, and he looks at Agnes, and he says, "You know, I like it here." And she says, "Uh," she says, "Oh, really?" And she says, "He, he says, yeah, it's quiet, unlike you know at home." And he looks at her, he says, "You know, you're quiet on the inside." On the inside, yeah. Yeah, you're quiet on the inside. Like there, there you go. That's that's your big that's your big hit. If you, it, I mean, obviously, like clues, like you piece it together from like from like previous episodes. The clues have already been there, but like if you weren't getting it before, that's like your biggest hit yet before the big reveal that something's going on with this character. Yes. That's kind of like there's your sign, <laughs> right? And then that's the last time you actually see the twins in the episode before, you know, Agnes gets Wanda into her home and Wanda realizes the twins are nowhere to be seen. She sees like some half eaten like peanut butter and jelly sandwiches on the table or something. Yeah. And at first she's just not even putting it together. And then she sees those and is looking around and she's like, where are the kids? And then she, as she's glancing around, she glances towards two things, which I guess are implying are the kids, which one is like I a, have no idea. One's a hamster like- and the other is like a, a, a cicada. A cica- cicada. Cicada uh, on the uh, on the curtain, and yeah. the other one was the rabbit, not a hamster. No, no, because they show the rabbit later. This is like I thought. I thought it was the I, same thing too. But then I, when I watched it again, there was like a a hamster or something. Really, I could swore it was just the rabbit again. Maybe I'm wrong, but it looked different when I watched it the sec uh, when I watched the episode a second time. Okay, well maybe. Well, yeah, but anyway, anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, but then Agnes says, "Oh, they're probably just in the basement." Yeah. They're probably just playing in the basement. Yeah. And so she starts heading down into the basement. And at first it's just, you know, a basement. And then there's like, there's kind of weird glows coming from different areas. And there's like vine kind of things seeming to be growing into the walls and stuff. It's kind of got like a, almost like a little bit of an upside down vibe, you know? (laughs) It's, It's a very creepy basement, right? Yeah. She sees like a magic book that's like radiating some kind of energy. I know some people have already speculated online that it might be like the dark hold or something, which was in like Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., but, you know, that's not canon. But it's some kind of a magical book, you know? Yeah, it's a magical book. And th- and this is where we get the big reveal uh, that people have suspected since the beginning of the show. Mm-hmm. It's Agnes all along. Yep. Agatha song, all Agatha, along. Agatha, Agatha Harkness, because, right? Yes, because her name is Agnes. It's Agatha Harkness. Yeah. She just kind of abbreviated Agatha Harkness to Agnes. Agatha Harkness. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just wanted to go over. I I, uh, um, I grabbed it up right here. These are the lyrics to the song. Okay. Okay. You can uh, do do your best singing voice. Uh, I'll, I'll just. I'm gonna do it in like beat poetry, spoken words. Beat po- <laughs> you, you have to do some snaps. 
who's been messing up everything? It's been Agatha all along. No, I'm not going to keep this up. Okay, no, no <laughs> I can't. My fingers are starting to hurt. Yeah. Who's been pulling every evil string? It's been Agatha all along. She's insidious. Ha ha. So perfidious that you haven't even noticed. And the pity is, the pity is, pity, 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 pity. It's too late to fix anything now that everything has gone wrong. Thanks to Agatha. Ha. Naughty Agatha. It's been Agatha all along. And I killed Sparky, too. Yeah, I like that. I killed Sparky, too. And then she does that laugh, that maniacal laugh at the end. I mean, and, and yeah, it's been there all along because the, because guess what? You know, uh, she's, she's the one character in the entire town that's always up in Wanda and Vision's business, right? She's always there to uh, lend a hand mm-hmm. at, at the most convenient times. Nobody else in that town constantly barges into her home, but you know, it's, it's kind of like that's the trope of the nosy neighbor or like the nosy friend who who comes in who's constantly around right in the sitcom so it kind of slides by what's the term i was using last week that i call it like the manipulator yeah, the said manip- there's somebody behind the scenes it's like manipulating things you know yes. and that's i guess this is our manipulator you know well, so i mean you know. Th- those are the, those are the clues that she's she's always there uh mm. despite the fact that she's so prominent uh nobody in sword could id her yeah you know they they They've ID'd all the minor characters, but the but the person who has the most screen time besides Wanda and Vision can't be ID'd by Sword. Uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Something's up with that, you know? <laughs> yeah. That was a really cool, that, that whole musical, like, opening scene that thing was, with Agatha all along was, like, hilarious. So it was great. That was hilarious. I and loved they it. showed, like, and they showed, like, a uh, behind the scenes, like, a uh, from the different episodes of, like, how she, like, manipulate things uh-huh. behind Wanda's back, you know? They even showed, uh, from this episode where, sh- where she was the one behind the camera when Wanda was doing the confessionals. Yeah, it just tells us what, what we already knew, which is that Catherine Hahn is an American treasure. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, so that's great. Um, we got that. You stuck around for the post credit scene, right? I stuck. Snooper's gonna snoop. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, I so, noticed that like by accident, like so, I, I let it go all the way through the credits. Noticed that and then said like well, there texted a, you right away. Was like. <laughs> yeah, you messaged me. I saw that. And uh, yeah, so there has been a big absence this episode where there was no Pietro, there was no Quicksilver. Mm-hmm. And it's not like Wanda killed him at the end of the last episode or anything. She just knocked him over. She didn't kill him. She didn't banish him. So you're kind of sitting through the episode going, hmm, where's she, Pietro? She just pushed him away. Yeah. So you're kind of sitting there going, hmm, where's Pietro? How, nobody's mentioning him. Uh, he's not around. Well, he is around uh, because because the post scene credits, it shows like, you know, shows Monica. She's, she's kind of followed Agnes and Wanda to where they went to Agnes's home and she's kind of sneaking around the back there trying to uh, sneak in and she opens the outside cellar door into the basement and she kind of gets a glimpse of what's going on in the basement and then before she could do anything Quicksilver shows up behind her and he says Snooper gonna, Snooper's gonna snoop and then it just ends. Well there's two things because there's something that happens actually besides that. It's kind of a little subtle but then there's that there's something else that happened that we didn't mention in another scene that ties to that and that's after he says Snooper's gonna, gonna snoop you see Monica's eyes like glaze over like purple Huh, I and didn't they, notice that. They pointed out, they showed in the episode that, you know, like, what does Wanda's powers look like? It's red. Yes. Her powers are red. They yeah. showed oh, Agatha's, Agatha's powers, powers are purple. Powers are purple, yes. And the other time they showed that is right after, right before the, the Agatha All Long song played, it, like, uh, Wanda's eyes glazed over purple, too. Huh. So, so it makes me think, my theory about what's going on with this whole show, not everything, but, like, in general, kind of is that Wanda created this this fake world everything that was her Agatha wandered into it she like sensed the power came into it and she wanted to take control of Wanda or like uh, um, overpower her basically to use her maybe as a power source or something and in order to do that she manipulated things to stress Wanda out so everything she was doing was designed to like cause stress on Wanda leading up to her eventually expanding the hex 
which has, is why Wanda's so tired and worn out in this episode and why things are kind of like flipping between different, you know, eras, like with the game controllers, for example, is because she doesn't, she's losing control. She's, she's too, she's spread too thin. And that uh, this is like, because she's now spread that thin, this allows Agatha to kind of take over and ha- like has gained control over her. So that's kind of my prediction. I think there's probably more to it than that. There's like, there's, you know, I, I don't know what Agatha's reasoning is, what exactly she's, she is doing by taking over Wanda, what she, if she's taking the power away from her or, or what she's doing. Like, I don't know the exacts of that. I'm just, I think that that's what the, everything's been hinting towards is basically that Agatha's acting as a stressor on Wanda and has reduced Wanda's like mental state enough that she can take over. And that, that, that's what she just did. So that's my guess. Do you have, do you have any thoughts about where this is going or? No, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes. We got two episodes left. I think the whole like eras of sitcom thing is over. Yeah, I think, I think it ends here with, uh, with the, with the Agatha reveal. Yeah. I said last week that like I thought in the penultimate and season finale that we were going to have that kind of breaking down where like it's showing different eras like colliding and stuff. I think we already got that. So I don't necessarily think that's going to happen again. I think that's kind of already happened and we've already gotten what we needed from that. So that's not there. We have kind of vision kind of he's he finally decided screw playing by the rules and just kind of like faced through the, the truck and just took off. Yeah. Towards Wanda. Uh, which means that he's kind of like he's exerting enough willpower now to like be kind of independent in that way so that's going to make it kind of interesting where things go from now with this and what's going on with the kids what's happening is is Agatha working alone is she working at the behest of somebody else is all these kind of questions are like what's you know we're going to come up with in the end and you know how are we going to end this out are we going to have like another huge cameo kind of thing? Are we, are we going to see Doctor Strange? Cause we know that this is eventually going to lead into the second Doctor Strange movie, you know? I think that's kind of the ideal way to end this, right? Yeah. Just to end that's... this with Doctor Strange showing up. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Is there anything else you want to talk about about the episode? I think we covered everything. Yeah. What would we miss? I'm looking over my notes. We got pretty much everything. The only thing we didn't mention, I guess, is that Director Hayward is, like, I guess, moving ahead with some sort of a strike. Yeah, I don't really care about that storyline. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, so nothing major. Okay. Yeah, we can end it here. Yeah, okay. So uh, all we have left to do is talk about what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Today is Monday, February 22nd, as we're recording this. On Tuesday, February 23rd, Superman and Lois comes to the CW. On Wednesday, February 24th, the Baron. Ernest Von Sketch Show comes to IFC, Snowfall to FX, and Ginny and Georgia to Netflix. On Thursday, February 25th, Punky Brewster, the remake series or continuation, comes to Peacock. Close Enough to HBO Max, Millennials to All Black, High Rise Invasion to Netflix. On Sunday, February 28th, The Walking Dead returns on AMC, and the 93rd Annual Golden Globe Awards air on NBC. On Monday, March fit, uh, March 1st, Debris comes to NBC. This is, uh, they're still doing the fucking Lost ripoff shows. Of course they are. Like the, oh god, we've talked about this so many times that I have to say it again. If you want to replicate what Lost did, you have to go in with a bunch of questions that have unlimited answer possibilities. You can't go Go in with a very specific gimmick. No, you can't. And that's what all of these shows do. Every single one of these shows that tries to rip off Lost comes in with this very specific gimmick. Something very specific happens, and it's supernatural, and, and the question is, what is it? Whereas what Lost did is Lost had something that just happens in reality, a plane crash, and then and started plane- introducing all these side things that were kind of weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lost had had the plane crash, and the, and the question was, so so what do the characters do from here? And then as they were dealing with their situation, all these weird things popped up, all these mysteries popped up. Yeah, you know? and that's yeah. what made 
Lost so good and so iconic is the way that they did that. When you come in and you're already sh- showing your your wild card right from the very beginning, it's like, uh, you're doing it wrong, guys. You're doing it wrong. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but that's debris on NBC. Looks like it's doing that exact thing again. There's like weird pieces of debris that have fallen to the earth and they're messing with the laws of physics or something. So <laughs> it's like it's designed to be episodic, you know, which is the opposite of what Lost was. On uh, Tuesday, March 2nd, The Flash returns on the CW. This was originally scheduled for this Tuesday, um, but it got delayed, I guess. Like when I was updating the schedule, it, it had moved the week. New Amsterdam also returns on NBC on that day. On Thursday, March 4th, Stephen Colbert presents Tuning Out the News comes to Paramount Plus, which used to be CBS All Access. Uh, and Pacific Rim The Black comes to Netflix. That's kind of like the anime Pacific Rim spinoff series. On Friday, March 5th, Winona Earp returns on Sci-Fi. And on Sunday, March 7th, Pennyworth returns on Epics and Good Girls returns on NBC. So that's what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Next week, we are going to be discussing the penultimate episode of WandaVision. So look forward to that. We're looking forward to it already. And that's it. So you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Tyson Gifford. You can follow Will. He is at Voxel Hero. You can check out our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, as well as our site, thetotalscreen.com. You can subscribe to the podcast through any major podcast client like iTunes or um, Pocket Cast or Apple Podcasts, I guess, instead of iTunes now. And the entire backlog of our podcast is available on our YouTube channel. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. If you would like to reach out to us and make a comment, send an email to contact at thetotalscreen.com. Stay tuned to The Total Screen for the very best in genre television.